Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to get your Instagram follower account on your ESP8266 or ESP32. If you look at my display here, it's showing my follower account on Instagram, it's a massive 9, but it's fetching this data directly using the ESP32 from Instagram. And I'm going to show you how I did that now using a library I've created. First I'm going to show you how to install and use the library, and then if you're interested stick around and I'll show you how I wrote it and some of the challenges I faced with it. So inside the Arduino IDE, you want to go to Sketch, Include Library, and then Manage Libraries. You then want to search for Instagram and install the library called Instagram Stats. So I already have it installed here. And then the only other library that you need to install is one called JSON Streaming Parser by Daniel Icorn. And again, I already have this installed. So you just need to install these two libraries. When they're installed, just go to File and then Examples, and then scroll down to the in Instagram Stats folder, and then either select if you're using an ESP32 or an ESP8266 and select the User Data example. Inside the User Data example, you just need to change a couple of things to get it to work. So you need to replace your SSID and password with your ones for your Wi-Fi network, and then also you want to set the username of the person's followers you want to get. So it's the end of the URL. So my Instagram name is Brian underscore lock. So I'm setting the username to be Brian lock. And that's actually all you need to do. So when you've done that, just click the upload button and it should upload to your board. The sample sketch is set up to refresh the data every minute from Instagram and display it on the serial monitor. But as you've seen earlier, you can put this number on a display or really you can do whatever you want with it. It's actually really straightforward. You initialize the library using a client that supports HTTPS, so this will work on the ESP8266 and ESP32. It also actually should work on the MRK1000 board, but I don't have one, so I've never tested it. And then once you connect to the Wi-Fi inside the loop, it runs this thing, and every minute it calls get Instagram stats for user. And all get Instagram stats for user does is call instastats.getUserStats and passes in the username and it gets a response back. But the only option in that response object is followed by count. So there's other things that we could improve on with this library and parse things out, such as uh, the number of people you follow. But uh, if anybody wants that, maybe raise a pull request or a request in uh, GitHub issues. That's all there is to it in terms of using the library, so as I said, it's pretty straightforward. I'll leave a link to the library's GitHub in the description below, but you should be able to install it from the library manager. For those interested, I'll now go through the library's code and some of the challenges that I faced. The first challenge was that normally I would use the service provider's API, and Instagram do have an API, but you need to provide an access token to um, use it. And the steps for getting an access token, these were the most concise steps I could find. And yeah, they're really long and cumbersome. Like, and it also involves spinning up a local MAMP or WAMP server, which I didn't think people were going to do for their Arduino project. So I wanted to find another uh, alternative to getting this data without needing to go through these steps. Thankfully, I came across this gist post here, and uh, halfway down it, somebody pointed out that if you passed in an extra parameter, uh, question mark underscore underscore a equals one, you got the JSON version of the public pages on Instagram. So if we take a look at the JSON that comes back from here, and we select it all, and then run it through a JSON parser, you can see a prettier version of what uh, what we want and you can see so all the information that we want is here so the the thing we're most interested in is this followed by and the count is 766 so this is the username uh, it was actually just username in this case but we could have changed it to whatever and this is their details so this is what we're using to parse the data so this username doesn't actually have that many posts on Instagram so it isn't that big of a payload, but if we look at someone who's a bit more active, like Becky Stern, you can see that the payload that comes back is pretty big. So again, if we look at that, so a lot of this is just post details. Um, so you can even see the amount of likes on the different, you know, the 
the most recent posts. But uh, yeah, it's pretty big. So the Arduino JSON, um, the Arduino JSON library would not be able to parse all this data. So we need to do something else. So what we're using to parse that JSON data is the JSON streaming parser. Obviously, we installed that earlier on, and this is written by Squix, which is Daniel Icorn. So this is a really good way of parsing a large amount of data for your Arduino. So it goes by it, you know, byte by byte. So you can take out the pieces of information that you want. It's a little bit harder to use than the Arduino JSON library, but it makes consuming big JSON files possible. For example, the Google Maps API, the directions one, some of the results I was getting back were like 25,000 characters long, and this was still able to parse it, no problem. So you define a listener that inherits JSON listener, and it has all these different methods that we need to overwrite. So a lot of them we don't care about. Uh, you might want to care about them in certain scenarios, but uh, this was a pretty basic use case, and I'll just talk through what I did here. It's probably useful to look back at the JSON here. So if we look here, biography, this is the key, and then maker and sharer of things is the value that belongs to that key. But then if we go down to followed by, so the key is still followed by, but instead of a value, it starts a new object. So this is what will trigger the start object. And then the next time it sees a key will be this count. So when it starts a new object, what was currently our key was followed by. So we want to push that up to be parent. So then when we see count, we can also check that our parent is followed by, because as you can see down here, there's another count, but we want the followed by count. So that's why we need to check followed by as well as what our current key is. And then when we finish this object, we want to clear out what our current parent is because the next object we go to or the next property will set the key again. The code for fetching the data from Instagram is actually pretty straightforward. It's just a normal client get request. Uh, I'll step through that now. So basically we need to we need to initialize blank variables for our listener. So we're newing up uh, Instagram user stats to make sure that we're not sending the same data back twice. We're just blanking out current key and current parent in case that was left in a bad state. And we're also taking a new JSON streamer parser and a new Instagram listener. And then we want to set the parser listener to be the listener, the Instagram user listener we created. So this is actually something I needed to put in because, uh, yeah, every second request to Instagram was failing on version 2.3 of ESB8266 core. So this was a quick and dirty way of fixing that. And it also wouldn't impact ESB8266 2.4, which was working every time because just once this first connect happens, it'll never see the second connect. It'll just go straight in and the ESP32 was the same. So it's just making a GET request to that uh, URL that we were talking about earlier. The only header I need to set is the host, and then it will wait uh, three seconds, or up to three seconds, for the client to be available, and we'll read the client in, and it passes each byte into the parser, and the parser knows what to do and triggers that, um, you know, new object or end object that we were looking at earlier. Because at the moment we're only looking for one data point, the followed by count, once that's set, we know we're finished. We, we don't need anything else from this. So there's no point waiting that three seconds anymore. So we're going to close the client and then return the user stats response. So ESP8266 didn't need to close the client. Uh, but the ESP32 does. So that's actually the main thing I need to change for all my other libraries to make them ESP32 compatible. And this is the header file of the library. As I mentioned, the only thing that I'm parsing out at the moment is followed by count, but we could parse whatever we wanted from that page. But I think this is probably the thing that most people will want. I also call this Instagram user stats because it would be possible to fetch the details of just a post page or an individual post. So if people wanted to monitor the likes of a particular post, uh, they could. Hopefully you found this video interesting. 
A library for connecting to Instagram to fetch the follower account is probably the one I've been asked to do the most over the last while, so hopefully people can build some cool things with it. If you do, I'd love to see it in the YouTube comments below, or else you can post it to me on Twitter, at WitnessMeNow. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment sections and I'll do my best to help. Thanks a lot.